What are okay. we doing today? So today we're going to throw a small ball. We're going to go through all the basic steps of throwing something on the wheel. So we're going to start with our lump of clay, press it down into the wheel. We want to make sure it. that it's really well sealed. <laughs> don't, wait, turn my, my wheels off. Basically don't watch anything that she's doing. <laughs> um, yeah, we want to turn the wheel on, on the right. And we're going to create a really good seal at the bottom of our mound of clay. So you can kind of um, trace your finger around it, dip it in the water if you want. So we're going to get the clay nice and wet um, before we start working with it. And we want to bring it all to the center. You can see my hands are moving a lot. How's yours? Yeah, it's moving. Yeah. So we want it to get to the stage where our hands aren't moving anymore. Uh, so to do that, I'm going to do what's called centering um, or coning up and coning down. Coning for the Americans. <laughs> coning. The Aussies will get it. Yes. Okay. Um, so to cone up, I'm going to make this shape with my hands. So my right hand is going to go to the bottom of the clay. And my left hand is going to um, also touch the clay, but with my fingers wrapped slightly around. Wait, what am I doing wrong? Uh, you want to have your elbows down on your legs. Uh, find a nice straight posture with your back. Get comfortable. So I want to make sure that the clay is nice and shiny. So it shouldn't be matte or it shouldn't be very grippy. Um, and I'm just gonna, with my hands like this shape, I'm gonna squeeze them slowly together. And as I squeeze, the clay has nowhere to go but up because it's spinning around and it's moving in our hands. I'm just gonna squeeze my hands together and as I do that, you can see that it gets a little taller. Now some people um, just keep their hands at the bottom and only squeeze at the bottom. And for a small piece of clay like this, that's totally fine. But once you, you're working with bigger pieces, then you wanna move your hands up. Um, How tall should it go, Mel? It doesn't need to be super tall. This is probably as tall as it it's needs to be. It's not a competition. It's definitely not a competition. <laughs> if it's too tall, uh, I just got clay on my face, didn't I? No, you're good. Okay, good. If it's too tall, it means that the next step will be a little more difficult. So we like to keep it in the kind of like pyramid shape. It doesn't want, you don't want it to be I too went, narrow. Did I go too tall? You went a little. Don't go this. Not too tall necessarily, maybe a little bit too narrow. Ah, uh, okay, got it. I'm gonna wet my clay again, and for the next step, coning down. I'm gonna use just this part of my hand and it's gonna go on top of my clay, but not directly in the center. Where does it go? Seven o'clock. Yeah, if I think of my wheel as a clock, it goes just slightly towards seven. I'm gonna relax my fingers over the clay as well. I'm not pressing with them just now, I'm Actually, only pressing I, with the top. I don't put my hands around. You like it up? I like it up because then I can hmm. see it. There's different ways to do all of this, but. Slightly different you. option. I'm gonna teach you the better way. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm gonna press down, and I'm not pressing straight down on my clay, I'm pressing kind of towards one o'clock. So it's a little towards the right. Um, and as I do that, you can see that, even though this is still a little wobbly, this is starting to be completely still. So we want it to get to the point where it's completely still in our hands. So I'm just gonna keep pressing down in that one spot. And again, my elbow is anchored to my leg, um, and that just helps keep my hands still. And once it starts to get this kind of mushroom shape, I'm going to come in with my right hand. Um, and I'm just going to catch the ridges with this part of my finger. So if I think about my fingers almost as a stencil for what shape I want the clay to be, I can make the shape with my finger. You know, I want it to be slightly curved, kind of straight, and I'm just going to press there. Okay, so I like to go in at this stage and with my thumbnail, just take away some of the, um, that kind of uh, flattened out bit at the bottom. It just gives us a nice uh, starting point for the next step, which is? Uh-oh, are we gonna cone up again? Yeah. So we wanna cone up a few times, actually. So Anna and I will just do the next couple quickly. So you can see it's still kind of moving in my hands and I wanna get it to the stage where it's really still. I usually do this three times, up, down, up, down, up, down. How fast should a wheel be going? I describe it as a medium speed. <laughs> but yeah, like our pedal. My pedal's about flat. Like, yeah, yeah, flat pedal. Yeah. So now I've done it three times, so I'll put some water on it, and I'm just gonna lay my hands on it and test it. And it feels pretty still. How's yours? Good. Great. Is there such a thing as too centered? There's not such a thing as too centered, but I think that there is such a thing as too much centering. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah. I get that question sometimes. Yeah. You can cone up, you know, like five, six times is probably fine, but after a while you start adding too much water to it and it makes the clay kind of break down and a bit harder to use. So you get all this gross stuff in your hands. 
Um, it's called slip, and even though it's called slip, it actually makes the clay less slippery. So we're gonna wipe it off on the edge of our bucket as we go. Um, okay, so now we've centered it. So this outside part of the clay is actually gonna be the outside walls of our piece. So now we're gonna start to work on the inside. I'm gonna find the center using the flat part of my thumb just on top of it. And again, I'm anchored, my hand is touching the clay at the back. I'm just gonna lay my thumb across and create just a tiny little divot. Just to find where the center is. How do you feel about that? Good. Good. Great. Now I'm gonna drill. So to drill, I'm gonna use the tip of my left thumb. We use our left thumb, we use our left hand a lot. I only use my left hand. Yeah. You're going to switch. Left -handed? No, I'm not. Neither am I. And that has to do with the way the wheel is spinning. We want to go against the turn of the clay. So this is always hard for me because my thumb like has oh, this huge arc. Hard. I have to like force it to be like a drill. So just keep it straight. Yeah, try to keep it as straight as you can. And I like to stop once my knuckle is even with the top of the mount. So I'm just pressing straight down at this point. Okay, so I've created this hole and I'm gonna actually measure the distance before I go any further. I want to measure how thick the bottom is. So I'm gonna take this tool, it's a needle. Uh, I'm gonna press it straight into the bottom of the clay until it touches the wooden bat. Then I'm gonna wrap my hand around the needle and press my index finger down until it touches the bottom of the clay. And I'm gonna pull them out together and see how much space I have at the bottom. This is great. That's good, right? No yeah, more yours drilling is good. For me. So now that we have that hole, I'm gonna, I want to open it out. So I'm gonna widen out the inside a little, um, and this is also gonna widen the outside slightly. So a couple of things to be aware of is again trying to keep my thumb straight. I'm aiming to get a shape that's like this, flat-ish on the bottom and straight-ish on the sides. Okay. On the inside. So I'm gonna drag my thumb towards nine o'clock, or to, just straight towards the left, um, and it's gonna stay in this shape. So and perpendicular to the bat, so let's try it. So I'm gonna add a little water. And I'm only, my fingers are touching the outside, you're gone, that's fine. I oh, like yeah. to keep my fingers anchored, because otherwise I feel like so I'm you can see what's going on around. So I keep my fingers anchored I'll to try the it clay your way. and to the bat. Okay, so now we've opened it out, and my bottom's a little ridgy. How's yours? Yeah, mine too. Yeah. It's like a mess down a little, there. A little ridgy dinge. And uh, so I'm just gonna flatten out the bottom a little. Um, before I move on to the next one. So this um, serves two purposes. One, it smooths out those ridges that we just created. And two, it compresses um, any little fine lines that might have, um, that might appear from what we did before we got on the wheel, which was wedging. So now we're gonna make the walls a little taller. And I like to make pincers with my fingers. And so my two fingers and my thumb. I'm gonna put them on the uh, piece of clay at five o'clock. Again, if I think of my wheel like a clock, I'm gonna gently pinch right from the base and really slowly move my fingers and thumb up the wall. And as I do that, my walls will start to get slightly taller. I want to be careful of not pinching too hard, and I also want to be careful of not moving my fingers too fast. So if I move my fingers too fast, watch what happens. Oh yeah, that doesn't See, look I good. created that spiral, so that means that those bits would be really thin and the other bits would be really thick. So I want to make sure that every part of the wall is getting a full rotation from the wheel at every stage as I move up. And we're going straight up, right? Not out. I go straight up. And then in between pulls, I like to just press, compress my rim a little. You can do that with the sponge or with your finger. I'm not pressing with any pressure really, it's just kind of a smoothing. I'm gonna do one more pull. What pull is that for you? Two or three? This is three. Okay. Oh, my wall has an air bubble in it. You can feel it. That happens sometimes. Yeah. Okay, so now that I've got the kind of height the kind of volume that I want, I'm gonna use this tool to shape it. So I don't need to concentrate on the outside really because we'll do that next yeah. week. Uh, okay, so this tool is used for shaping. Uh, very basic, this is a very basic lesson on the rib because you can use it for a lot of things but for this process we're just gonna use it for shaping the inside of our bowl. So I'm gonna hold the tool, um, you can hold it in your left or your right. 
um, and you use this little hole as a grip. So I'm going to hold the tool and I can do a lot of things with it. I'm going to put it in at three o'clock and I like to start at the rim. Oh really? I start at the bottom. Mm. I like to start at the rim, I don't know why. So you're seeing two techniques here. Yeah, so I'm starting at the rim and you can see as I press, even though I'm just in one spot, I'm pressing down and you can see that the shape changes slightly. And if I want to do a really big one, just for the sake of illustration. Ta -da. Are we making the same kind of bowl? Oh no, you're doing a different bowl. All right. Oh yeah, I'm doing a shallow, a wide, a wide boy. So at some point, you can push the clay too far, and I'm really approaching that point rapidly. Me too. <laughs> so I don't want to go too much further. Whoa, that looks great. I'm gonna um, do one more. So yay, we have bowls. We have bowls. What are we gonna do with these bowls? So there's a few little ridges on the inside, so I'm just gonna take my sponge as a last kind of finishing touch, and I'm gonna smooth out inside um, and this will also dry out any excess water that I might have and I'm also going to smooth out the rim. It's like a pool inside of mine, there's so much water. <laughs> it's empty, mine's totally dry like a desert, what the heck. And then the very last step is a wire which my handy assistant Trent is going to bring me right now. <laughs> assistant slash cameraman. Yeah. <laughs> wrap it once around my fingers just to create extra tension. I feel like the airline. I know, strip, yeah. Like, click it in. <laughs> in the case of Seat emergency. Belt. <laughs> okay. Okay, so I'm going to hold it. I'm going to press it down on the back and hold it as tight as I can. And I'm going to pull it all the way through the bottom here. And it will resist, but do persist. <laughs> <laughs> And voila! Et voila. <laughs> okay, that's it. So now I'm gonna leave this. I'm gonna put it on my shelf, um, wherever I went. Where our plant is. <laughs> and then in a couple of days, it'll be ready to lift off the bat and trim. And we'll show you that in the next video. Next video. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Show up for class next time. Yeah. <laughs>